manager. If your security makes you a substantial chargee within the meaning of the Part 5.3a of the Corporations Act, you'll be entitled to appoint a, an administrator and you'll also be able to um, exercise your right to appoint a receiver during the so-called decision period, which starts before the administrator is appointed and lasts for 10 business days after, or 15 business days, I think it is now. So you'll still have the rights that you have as a substantial chargee under the new regime. But there are some detailed provisions dealing with what might be called migration of security interests. And they will come into play before the Act comes into effect. Under these migration provisions, interests that are currently on existing registers around the country, you know, these 40 registers, will be transferred automatically across to the PPS register, which is being devised. And those migrated interests will retain the priority they currently have under the existing law. Because of constitutional limitations, the Commonwealth can't change those priority interests in respect of existing security interests, except in the event of an insolvency under the bankruptcy and insolvency power. So what it's doing is it's saying to some security interests that are not moved across, it's saying, if you haven't been moved across, you are a transitional security interest. You haven't been moved across because the information on the current register is not good enough. It's not adequate to satisfy the requirements of the new regime. So you can survive as a transitional security interest for two years. You don't have to do anything for two years. But if at the end of the two-year period you haven't perfected your security interest in some way, then it will be ineffective in an insolvency situation. So in effect, there's a carrot and stick. There's an inducement to existing secured parties to register under the new regime. But they've got this grace period of two years within which to comply. And if they do lodge for registration, if they do perfect their security interest, they have embraced the new regime voluntarily and they're bound. And their priority will then be determined by the new regime, not by their existing priority, because they're giving up their existing priority. It may run out anyway in that two-year period, let's face it. And I, I suspect that many secured parties will elect to join the new regime. That was not the case in New Zealand. They were very slow to adapt to the regime, but there was no sting in the tail in New Zealand. Unregistered security interests were not ineffective in New Zealand. They will be here. So there's an incentive here to register. Yes. They will get a verica verification statement that it has. Oh. They won't get a verification statement if it hasn't. Mm -hmm. So, and they can do a search. Yeah. They'll be able to do a search. Like it'll cost two dollars to do a search, and be, you can do it instantaneously from your desk. So they can check, and, and there'll be a lot of publicity about when this migration process is complete. And and there are terms in the Act about migration time and registration commencement time and so on. And if you are on the register, you'll be issued with a verification statement. If you're not on the register, you'll you'll have to check on that. The regulations may provide for an extra notice, but it currently doesn't. So the onus will be on you to check, and in quite broad terms, in the um, in the Act. Thank you. I keep talking about enforcement, and I really need to highlight the different criteria for enforcement. Enforcement can relate to enforcement between the two parties, between the grantor and the grantee, and then enforcement as against third parties, and there are different requirements for each setting. Let's look first of all at enforcement as between the two parties, the grantor and the grantee. This will occur when the requirements of section 61 of the Act are satisfied, when attachment occurs. An attachment will occur when two conditions are satisfied. A, when the debtor or grantor has a right or interest which it can transfer. That's the first element. Now that doesn't have to be ownership. As we saw in Graham and Porticom, the rights of a lessee of those transportable homes was a right or interest they could transfer. They could at least create a security interest and that was enough to satisfy the first element. So it doesn't have to be ownership. In fact, it usually won't be ownership. 
The second element is in the alternative. A plus either B or C. So it's A is an interest or right to transfer and B is value is provided by the secured party and that will generally be the case. Value. Now value doesn't mean new value. It can include a past debt. In other parts of the bill they refer to new value in the extinguishment provisions but in this context they're using the word value and that can be an existing liability or a past debt. So you can take a security to secure a past debt as is the case at present. That's the, second, that's the first way in which you can satisfy the second condition. And the second way in which you can satisfy the second element required for attachment is if the grantor or debtor does an act that causes the security interest to arise or be created. And simply put, that means when they do something that commits to the transaction. And that could be executing a deed, declaring a trust, lodging, share certificates by way of deposit, they've got to commit to the transaction. If that happens, the agreement is enforceable between the parties and that will occur pretty much straight away, as we'll see. Thank you. Enforcement vis-a-vis -vis third parties is different. Enforcement against third parties will be available where either possession or control is taken of the collateral. That's fairly clear. Secondly, thank you. Another way in which it will occur as between third parties is where there is an agreement between the grantor and the grantee containing an adequate description of the collateral and that agreement is signed by the grantor. Now the commentary says it has to be signed by both parties but the bill says it only has to be signed by the grantor. We'll have to watch that. And you might say, well, it's not an agreement if it's not signed by both parties. That's not true. A guarantee isn't always signed by both parties. It's addressed to the creditor, but it's signed by the guarantor. So we'll have to watch that and see how that evolves through the courts. But the agreement must contain an adequate description of the collateral. Now this is going to be very important for us as lawyers to focus on because you're going to have to describe the collateral accurately. And you can do it quite simply by saying all the present and after acquired property of the debtor. That will be adequate. So the kind of comprehensive all-embracing description you currently have in a mortgage dimension will be enough. You could say goods, that's fine. That will be all goods and goods is something different from personal property. Goods is a much narrower term than personal property but you could say goods. But you can't say consumer goods or commercial property. You can't say equipment but you can say inventory. So there is funny little rules. Why can't you use these other terms like consumer goods or commercial property? Because the use of the property can change. A motor vehicle dealer might buy a car for his son, in which case it's a consumer good. But then the son might tire of it and the motor vehicle dealer might start using that car as a courtesy vehicle, in which case it becomes equipment. So simply to describe something by its initial use is misleading, according to the regime. So you're going to have to be very careful about this when you're drafting security agreements and financing statements that are lodged. You have to be particularly careful, of course, when you're talking about motor vehicles and other serially numbered goods like aeroplanes and boats because you're going to have to mention quite precisely the serial numbers and any error is fatal. Let me look at some rights and 